Hi everyone, I hope you are well today. I'm Ryan Witt and I am a junior in the AIM program. I cover international healthcare and today I will be covering QIGEN NV, ticker QGEN. QGEN is a leading molecular diagnostic company that turns biological samples into molecular insights for patients. It operates through two main segments, consumables, which makes up 86.4% of revenue, and instruments, making up the other 13.4%. Consumables is primarily made up of sample technologies that test through isolating DNA, RNA, proteins, and more from different samples taken from a person. Its instrument segments offer technology that analyzes those samples and makes genetic information available for insight. QGen operates in more than 25 different countries with a major portion of revenue coming from the U.S., China, and Germany. QGen's corporate headquarters are in Venlo, Netherlands. Now moving on to my recommendation for QIGEN. Unlike most companies, QIGEN was able to capitalize during the pandemic by shifting their sample technologies to include COVID testing. This led to an increase of sales of 22% and increase of EPS from negative 18 cents in fiscal year 19 to $1.57 in fiscal year 20. QIGEN is looking to further improve in fiscal year 21 by 18% due to ongoing COVID testing. The success during the pandemic also allowed the company to shift focus and improve trends on non-COVID items. QuiGen launched the QuiSphere, which is a cloud-based technology that will work with the company's testing platform, QuiSatDX. This will make information more readily available, speed up turnaround times, and cut costs across system platforms. Finally, in August 2020, Thermo Fisher's acquisition attempt of QuiGen fell through, resulting from only 47% of shareholders approving when 67% was required. QuiGen shareholders valued the company at a higher value than the $49 a share offered. At the time, it was trading for $40 a share. The reason for rejection was the growth in fiscal year 20 and the continued growth in fiscal year 21 that was expected. With this, it is recommended that QuiGen be added to the AIM International Equity Fund with a price target of $59.39, representing an upside of 18.55%. QuiGen is taking advantage of COVID success to set up a new roadmap for growth beyond fiscal year 21 through five pillars, which are Sample Technologies, Quasity, Quistat DX, Numo DX, and Quantiferon. These will target $6 billion in opportunities from an $11 billion market. All of these but sample technologies are expected to grow by double-digit post-COVID. QuiGen has dedicated over 60% of fiscal year 21 R&D to these pillars, which is double what they spent in fiscal year 19. These pillars result, will result in faster result times and improved gross and operating margins. Additionally, they will bring about better utilization of systems and increased usage of digital channels. My second driver is the two collaborations that QuiGen is in. The first is with Inovio Pharmaceuticals to develop a liquid biopsy test to complement Inovio's therapies. The test would help identify women suffering from cervical precancer who would benefit from the therapies. Each year, there are 570,000 new cases of cervical cancer and about 300 million women affected worldwide. The current market sits at $5.9 billion and is expected to grow up by 6.2% CAGR year until 2027. The second collaboration is with Illumina, in which, they have two, in which the two have a 15-year partnership for QuiGen to develop test kits for Illumina systems. Currently, each year there are 270,000 in vitro fertilizations performed. The current market is expected to reach 14.9 billion by 2025, growing at a 10.3% CAGR. My final driver is the growing molecular diagnostic market that QuiGen holds a competitive edge in. Currently, QuiGen has an 8% market share in an $11.3 billion market. This market is expected to grow to 16 billion by 2025 at an 8.57% CAGR. To capture more of this market, QuiGen acquired New Mode DX, which offers automated molecular diagnostics and industry-leading turnaround times. This acquisition puts QuiGen in almost every molecular testing area there is. Additionally, QuiGen launched 10 new products that support the testing of COVID and in fiscal year 20 brought in $200 million. This is expected to continue into fiscal year 21. In order to reach an intrinsic value for QuiGen, a five-year DCF was constructed. Using a WAC of 5.72% and terminal growth rate of 1.75%, an intrinsic value of $57.76 was reached. A sensitivity analysis of plus or minus 50 basis points on the terminal growth rate and WAC resulted in a $46.56 to $76.67 target range. The peers used to value EV to EBITDA and PE ratios were Brucker Corporation, HMS Holdings Corporation, Meridian Bioscience Inc., Allergent, and Danner Corporation. An EV to EBITDA multiple was calculated using a weighted average of 25.42, re resulting in a price target of $58.54. A PE multiple was calculated using a 
47.66 weighted average, resulting in a price target of $73.36. The DCF weighted 70%, EV to EBITDA weighted 20%, and PE ratio weighted 10%, resulted in an intrinsic value of $59.39 with 18.55% upside. Quagen does not pay a dividend. While Quagen is a top company in its market, it is still vulnerable to risks. Quagen faces growing competition as the molecular diagnostic market continues to expand. Some competition with more financial resources would also be capable of entering the market and causing a disruption. Another risk is the failure for Quagen to bring about new products and innovations. This would allow for competition to catch up and potentially slow the growth of Quagen. The market is constantly and rapidly changing, which puts pressure on Quagen to continue to innovate. Finally, Quagen is always at risk for potential litigation with the amount of technology there is within biotech firms. Potential litigation could cause expenses and lost technology for the future of Quagen. Moving on to management, Thierry Bernard is the CEO and has been since 2020 after serving an interim basis following the departure of Pierre Schatz. He previously worked with a top competitor, Biomaru, for 15 years. Roland Sackers has been the CFO since 2004 and been with Quigen since 1999. He's given a lot of credit for building the company to what it is today. To conclude, Quigen is constantly looking for new innovative ways to offer molecular insights to patients with a wide variety of different conditions. Quigen also expects the growth of their sample technologies to continue to expand and continued growth from COVID opportunities in 2021. Along with Quigen's recent five-pillar growth plan, their current collaborations, and the growing molecular diagnostic market, it is recommended that QuiGen be added to the AIM International Equity Fund. Thank you for listening, and if you have any questions, don't hesitate to reach out.